Sai Ram. It was the 1960s in the coastal town of Vishakhapatnam in Andhra Pradesh, India. A schoolboy was returning home, walking along the streets when he came across a small shop that was selling photographs and framing these photographs. His eyes chanced upon one particular photograph of a peculiar looking man. This man was wearing an orange robe from the neck till the foot and he had a thick mop of curly black hair. So much was his curiosity piqued that he went to the shopkeeper and asked, Who is this person? And the shopkeeper said, Oh, this is God. God? The little boy was surprised. He just paused for an extra moment to have a look at this picture of whom the shopkeeper called as God. And then he went back home. Now, this boy, Ram Mohan Reddy, had no idea that this picture of this God would keep coming back again and again in his life multiple times. By the time he graduated in English, almost a decade later, he had now become Ram Mohan Rao. Let me explain. One of the teachers in his school, while writing down his name, because of a hearing impairment, wrote it as Ram Mohan Rao instead of Ram Mohan Reddy. Now, Reddy is a surname in India that denotes a non-Brahmin, whereas Rao indicates Brahmin. Well, I will not go into the caste system now, but Swami clearly defines who a Brahmin is. Swami says, a Brahmin is a person who is in quest of the Brahman or God. Now, no occurrence in life is by chance you know it only appears as if it happened by chance ram mohan rao mr ram mohan rao decided not to change the name because he didn't have the time and energy and inclination to cut the red tape and go through all the bureaucratic processes that was then prevalent in india to change the name and so he remained as ram mohan rao but that was her first indication from swami to this little boy that your life would be spent in the quest of God. He had no clue till he applied for the post of a college lecturer in a college at Jaleshwar in the state of Orissa. What happened next was truly fantastic and Mr. Ram Mohan Rao realized that this Satya Sai Baba whose name he had heard so many times and pictures he kept seeing many places seemed to be possessing him and following him wherever he went. It was the year 1971 and Mr. Ram Mohan had applied for the post of the English lecturer in the Dina Krishna College at Jaleshwar in Orissa and he was to be interviewed by a certain Mr. Chitaranjan Sahu. When he went for the interview, he was asked only one question. And that question was, do you know Satya Sai Baba? And Mr. Ram Mohan replied, Sir, I have heard his name many times. I have also seen his pictures, though I have never visited him personally. And then Mr. Chitaranjan Sahu said, you might not have visited him, but I'm convinced it is he who has sent you here. How? Do you know today is 23rd November? 1971. This is the birthday of Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba and I believe that you are Bhagwan's gift to us. Therefore, no more questions asked, you are appointed. And that was how Mr. Ram Mohan became a lecturer in that college. And over the next one year, he got many opportunities to hear the wondrous stories of the glories of Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba. He got to know how he had already started a college in Bangalore and a women's college in Anantpur and how strict discipline was enforced in the college along with duty and devotion. And here Mr. Chitaranjan Sahu wanted a similar model to be adopted and emulated at the Dina Krishna College. That was Mr. Ram Mohan's first exposure to Swami's system of education even before he saw Swami. 
The connection to Swami seemed to get cut a year later in 1972 when Mr. Ram Mohan moved over to Chhatrapur and joined the Science College there as a lecturer because he got a better opportunity to progress his career there. But then dear brothers and sisters, once we have come under the refuge of God, once we have come into God's sights, there is no going away. As Swami says, we may let go of him and leave him. He will never let go of us or leave us. Maybe months may pass, years may pass, decades may pass, even lifetimes may pass. The God always remembers and He looks out for us. 1972, Mr. Ram Mohan joined the Science College and life went on as usual. Swami seemed to have disappeared till three years later in 1975. Now in this college, Mr. Ram Mohan had a colleague by name Mr. Prasanna. Now Mr. Prasanna Mishra was a very jolly, easy going person who had this single bad habit of smoking. He would smoke so many cigarettes in a day that nobody liked to be near him because his clothes, his hair, his skin, his everything, his very being, his breath, everything would smell of the cigarette smoke of nicotine. One day, early in the morning, sometime in November or December of 1975, when Mr. Ram Mohan came to the college, he saw that there was Mr. Prasanna early at that point of time in the day full fresh and looking good. He wondered what had happened to him. He asked him, Hey Prasanna, what happened to you man? You didn't sleep the whole night, is it? Because you seem to be uh, up so early. He said, No, 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 Ram Mohan, I slept like a baby. Oh, how come and, and you're smelling so good? Honestly, didn't you smoke? No, Ram Mohan, I have not smoked for a fortnight now. How? I thought only a miracle can make you stop smoking. Indeed, a miracle happened. I saw God. You saw God? Where? Ramon, why don't you come home today evening? I have a puja scheduled there, a worship. I will tell you everything in detail, slowly. And thus, Ram Mohan became very curious to know what had happened to Mr. Prasanna Mishra. That evening when he went home, the whole place was pervaded with incense stick smoke, which was in sharp contrast to the usual tobacco smoke that would be there. And there in the altar, after so many years, Ram Mohan's eyes fell on that familiar face and familiar figure. Swami, Bhagwan Sri Satisai Baba, photos of him pervaded the entire altar. Prasanna, this is Satisai Baba. Yes, I had been to see him in Puttaparthi for the Golden Jubilee, the 50th birthday celebrations that happened in the November of 1975. When I first saw him, I knew I was seeing God. Oh my God, here is God, I felt. And as Mr. Ram Mohan heard this, more and more his heart began to feel that there is some magic and there is some reason why this photo, why this being was following him everywhere. He became more interested. And Mr. Prasanna continued, he said that one day Swami came to me personally and gave me this and very gingerly he opened his hand and showed two vibhuti packets and he said ever since I have taken this vibhuti, I have been thirsting more and more for God and God alone and believe me Ram Mohan, that yearning, that thirst for smoking is totally gone. Without any effort, I don't want to smoke at all now. This has been given to me by his own hands. Here, take some vibhuti. And he gave Mr. Ram Mohan a little bit of vibhuti and told him, please eat it and apply it to your forehead. You will be blessed. With that, Mr. Ram Mohan returned to his home and he had a wonderful night's sleep. Before sleeping, as Mr. Prasanna had said, he took this vibhuti, applied it on his forehead and then he saw that a strange peace pervaded him. The next day morning, he went to the well to have a bath. Yes, those days, India did not have the luxuries, especially in the rural areas of a bathroom and a shower. No, you would draw water from a well and pour it over your head and have a bath. When Mr. Ram Mohan was having his bath, he found a pair of symbols. 
They clanged as he picked up the bucket and he wondered who had dropped these symbols near the well. Well, those symbols were symbols of something higher. They were the symbols to indicate to him that God was coming into his life. When he ran to Mr. Prasanna later on and told him about this discovery, about finding these symbols, Mr. Prasanna said, this means devotion or bhakti is going to enter your life. You are indeed blessed, Mr. Ram Mohan. The time for Mr. Ram Mohan's tryst with divinity was fast approaching and it happened in the summer of 1976. He wanted to further his career and therefore he had applied for a job, he had got the call and he had to travel far away to the megapolis, the big city of Hyderabad. That is when Mr. Prasanna told him, Hey Ram Mohan, you are going till Hyderabad, you must meet Prabhu. Hey, how do you know that I have a cousin named Prabhu in Hyderabad? Oh, no, 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 I am not meaning that. I am meaning Prabhu, Swami, the Lord, Satya Sai Baba. Puttaparthi is very close to Hyderabad. You should go and meet this Prabhu, Bhagwan. You know, dear brothers and sisters, actually Puttaparthi is 450 kilometers away from Hyderabad. It's not a short distance. It's a huge distance. But for a lover of God, for a devotee of the Lord, wherever Swami is, no distance is too much to travel because that is the kind of intoxication divinity brings. More intoxicating than wine is divine. <laughs> so, Mr. Prasanna forced Mr. Ramon, you must go to Puttaparthi. That was when, because of this coincidence of the Prabhu, Mr. Ram Mohan got this thought. He said, if Sai Baba is really God, when I go to Hyderabad, I must meet my cousin Prabhu. I don't know where he stays. I have not met him from years now. But if Satya Sai Baba makes me meet him, I will accept his divinity and I will go and see him. With that, Mr. Ram Mohan began his long journey from the state of Orissa to Hyderabad. He got down at the Hyderabad railway station, walked out and took a horse cart, a tanga, to go to some inn or a hotel or a motel to stay for the night. As he sat in that and he was going, he suddenly hears, Hey Ram Mohan! Hey Ram Mohan! Who is it? Prabhu! Prabhu had come! <laughs> Can you believe it? Of all the places and of all the people, it is Prabhu. <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters, it was actually Prabhu who had come because the time had come for Mr. Ram Mohan. As Ram Mohan saw his cousin, he stopped the tonga, got down, embraced him. It was a friendly embrace. And then Prabhu asked, how come you are here? And Mr. Ram Mohan asked, how come you are here? No, no, you leave that. How come you are here? I have come for a job interview and I'm going to the hotel. Oh, why should you go to a hotel? My home is there. Come, come, you should come home. And that is how Mr. Ram Mohan went and stayed at the home of Mr. Prabhu. The next day, during the interview, Ram Mohan got to know that this whole job application process was a farce because by nepotism, the candidate had already been selected for the job just to make a cover up and a make a show that every procedure had been followed, these interviews had been called for, which means Mr. Ram Mohan had no chance of getting the job in Hyderabad. That is what got him thinking. He felt, I have been called to Hyderabad not for this job but for some other purpose and he was now convinced that that purpose was to see Bhagwan Sri Satya Sai Baba. He immediately booked a ticket and travelled by bus to Anandpur where he stayed overnight and the next morning at 10.30 am, it was the 12th of July 1979, he reached Puttaparthi. He was a bit late for the morning darshan but then he got ready and turned up early for the evening darshan sitting in what was then called the car shed area. His neighbour was a Bengali gentleman from the city of Calcutta and he had a fascinating story to share. He had come to Puttaparthi for the first time the same year 1976 during Shivaratri and he had come there to find a cure for his son who had a terrible skin disease, some skin problem, pus would keep oozing and how many ever doctors tried treating him they had been unsuccessful so far. So this gentleman had pawned the jewellery at home 
and sold so many other things to get money and do this travel from the city of Calcutta to Puttaparthi. But then, after spending many days in Puttaparthi, in the heavily crowded time of Shivaratri, he couldn't get an audience with Swami. He got very discouraged and he felt that he had wasted all his time and energy and money and therefore he decided to leave in a huff. Dear brothers and sisters, even by mistake, if we decide to go to God, God blesses us. You know? This man was impatient and he had rushed out in a huff, taking his child and his wife along. Just before he could board the bus, a volunteer comes running and asks, Is there a Bengali Babu here? A Bengali Babu. Bengali Babu means a Bengali gentleman. Swami is asking for a Bengali Babu. He was the only Bengali Babu there. And therefore, from the bus stand, he was brought straight to the presence of Bhagwan. Swami looked at him with a lot of love and also a reprimand and said, You are very impatient. Devotion means there should be patience. Without patience, it is not devotion at all. I know what you have come here for. Here, take this. Swami gave him Vibhuti and told him, apply this for three days and your son will be fine. Blessing them, giving them Namaskar, Swami had sent them. And this gentleman confessed to Mr. Ram Mohan that in the three days that it took them to travel from Puttaparthi to Calcutta, his son had been completely cured. That had happened in the February or March of 1976. And now they had come to express their gratitude to Swami. Just listening to this story, Mr. Ram Mohan's heart filled with joy and he was now so eager to have his first darshan of Bhagwan. And as Swami came close, oh, it was bliss supreme. He understood what Prasanna meant by saying, you don't feel like you need anything else in life. The greatest gift, the greatest peace, the greatest joy, the greatest fulfillment in life is to see Swami, is to feel Swami, is to experience Swami. Swami did not speak to him, but that did not matter. Swami spoke to a neighbor and he heard Swami's voice. It felt so sweet listening to Swami, seeing Swami, touching the hem of his robe, drinking in the beautiful fragrance and all his senses and mind were saturated with Swami. Mr. Ram Mohan was thrilled and unfortunately he didn't have time, he had to leave because this was itself an extension that he had taken traveling from Hyderabad to Puttaparthi. So after that darshan, he left and returned back to his place in Chhatrapur in Orissa. But now he had tasted Swami and his hunger and thirst for Swami kept growing. He kept visiting Puttaparthi once or twice within that year itself to have more darshan. During the Dasara in 1976 when he was there, he saw the students and he saw how much love Swami was showering on the students. In fact, Swami mentioned that students are his only property. No other property, nothing else belongs to him. He's given up everything but his students. And when Swami says his students, it is not about those who studied in the college. Studying in the college there gives us an opportunity to be his students. But his students are those who follow his teachings. And therefore, even to this day, we can have Sai students across the world need not rush to one or two colleges in Puttaparthi or Vrindavan. We have to follow his teachings to be his students. But then, there, sitting in the darshan, Mr. Ramon felt how wonderful it will be if I can be a teacher in Swami's college so that I can teach these wonderful students and also get an opportunity to be near Bhagwan. With that began Mr. Ram Mohan's intense sadhana. Dear brothers and sisters, for two years after that day during the Dasra of 1976, Every day, Mr. Ram Mohan would cry and yearn, Swami, I want to come to you. Swami, I want to come to you. In fact, he had one pillow, which he would imagine it to be Swami. He would embrace the pillow and that pillow would be the sponge absorbing his tears of love, devotion and yearning. Every day without fail, he would cry, Swami, I want to be with you. Swami, I want to be with you. This is so inspiring 
aspiring. We cry for a million things on a daily basis, dear brothers and sisters. Do we cry for God every day? If we cry for God, we will get God. Just as when we cry for anything else, we get anything else. In fact, we may not get things of the world when we cry for it. But God, God is the only being in this universe who values our tears. May we shed every tear for God and God alone. This is what Mr. Ram Mohan did. He didn't stop at that. He told his mother, Please mother, I have a request to you. I will take care of all your needs. You please travel to Puttaparthi and be there. Have Swami's darshan daily and get an opportunity to ask him and tell him, Please grant my son a chance to teach in your college or your school. Please do this for me mother, he said. And he sent his mother to Puttaparthi. You know what dear brothers and sisters, on one occasion Swami actually gave his mother an interview and in that interview the mother asked on behalf of her son and Swami said, yes, I will give him an opportunity to become a teacher in my school. And having succeeded in her mission, she returned home and she conveyed this wonderful news to her son. Mr. Ram Mohan got so excited, so thrilled, he decided to pack up everything and travel to Puttaparthi because he was sure that he will become a teacher. Yes, he indeed became a teacher, but that is not the magical thing about the story. How he became is important because it shows the way God's master plan works. It doesn't work the way we think in the timelines that we want. It works so that it happens in the best possible manner for our soul at the best possible time. We will see that beautiful conclusion in the next part of this video. But until then, let us contemplate on this dear brothers and sisters. We don't know whether we came to Swami or Swami came to us. Whatever may be the case, whether we pursued Swami or Swami pursued us, for this divine romance to grow, for this divine relationship to grow, both are necessary, yearning from the Lord for the devotee and yearning from the devotee for the Lord. The yearning of the Lord is always there. Swami would say, Vetuku chunnanu nenu, vetuku chune unnanu, meaning, I am searching and searching for a devotee. He is always in search of a devotee and if we turn out to be a good devotee, the Lord will grab, he will swoop down upon us. Just like he went behind Mr. Ram Mohan Rao kept showing himself to him every now and then and pulled him to his lotus feet. Our responsibility, our duty lies in just yearning for him the way Mr. Ram Mohan yearned. He cried every night, shedding tears. As we conclude this episode, Dear Swami, I pray that the love that I have for you in my heart keeps growing stronger every passing moment and that every day I shed tears of yearning and pining for you. Thank you. See you in the next episode. Jai Sai Ram.